The Genuine Article. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack. Hello, I'm Tony DeMaria, the editor of Jack, and I'm here with another edition of The Genuine Article. And the last time I did Genuine Article, I talked about meta-analysis, uh, the whole concept of taking a group of studies and combining them together and to try to extract new information from the combination of, of studies that wasn't available from any single study. We talked about the, uh, the values and, and how it can synthesize the literature and, and in fact, uh, uh, point to efficacies and statistical significance where it's not readily apparent from the individual studies. We talked about the limitations and, and the fact that heterogeneity uh, uh, can create a great deal of difficulty in, and taking multiple different studies and putting them together can in fact uh, be like combining apples and oranges and coming out with fruit salad. Now having said that, I thought what we would do now is to talk about a specific meta-analytic study, one that the editors and reviewers thought was very good, to talk about the study not only for its value, but, but how it utilized meta-analysis. And in fact, uh, uh, the study that I'm referring to was done by Drs. Bangalore and Messerly, and it involves the assessment of the ability of beta blockers to prevent the onset of heart failure in patients with hypertension. Now, we're all well aware that hypertension has now been classified as one of the class A predisposing factors to heart failure, and that treatment, aggressive treatment uh, of hypertension is recommended uh, to avoid the onset of, of heart failure. And in this regard, beta blockers are often used in hypertensive patients. Now, there have been meta-analyses in the past that have interestingly shown that with regard to coronary artery disease, a treatment with beta blockers uh, does not necessarily reduce the incidence of, of mortality and morbidity, but there are no such data in heart failure. And so we start with a, a, an important concept that at the moment, uh, we really don't have any information about the value of beta blockers in reducing uh, the onset of heart failure in patients who have high blood pressure. And to this end, um, Bangalore and Associates searched the medical literature. They did an extensive uh, uh, review of the entire medical literature. And from this review, they were able to extract 12 papers which consisted of randomized clinical trials in which beta blockers were given as monotherapy. So they described carefully their inclusion criteria. Of all the papers in the literature on hypertension and treatment, which ones were they going to include? And their criteria were fairly well stated. Beta blockers had to be used as, as monotherapy. Um, in addition to that, uh, heart failure had to be reported as, as a clear-cut uh, endpoint. And uh, they wanted to be sure that they included uh, uh, studies that compared beta blockers not only with placebo, but with other antihypertensive therapy. So from these 112, uh, let me take that back, from these 12 randomized clinical trials, they were able to extract 112,000 patients in whom data was available. So one of the things that meta-analysis brings to bear in the medical literature is the huge sample size, enormous sample sizes, so that statistical significance can be examined uh, with, with really fairly great accuracy. And what they uh, observed was, in fact, that beta blockers are fairly good antihypertensive agents. As a mean in these studies, they lowered systolic blood pressure by about 12 millimeters of mercury and diastolic blood pressure by about 6 millimeters of mercury. So pretty effective agents as, 
as at lowering blood pressure. In fact, uh, it was also uh, demonstrated that as compared to placebo, that beta blockers uh, reduced the incidence of heart failure by about 23%. Now, uh, we didn't have 12 randomized clinical trials uh, comparing beta blockers to placebo. In fact, there were three major smaller ones. And so we show that, in fact, in meta-analysis, again, we're dealing with a huge number of patients, but for any specific question, only a small part uh, of that patient population may apply for the questions asked. And, and so there were really just three randomized clinical trials, but beta blockers did reduce the, uh, uh, the incidence of heart failure. What was important in this meta-analysis was, in fact, that the reduction in heart failure from beta blockers was not any greater than with other antihypertensive medications. So beta blockers did not have any advantage. And in fact, in the elderly, what was observed was about a 19% increase in stroke. And so by taking these very disparate uh, studies, for the first time, we have some clear evidence about the role of beta blockers in patients with hypertension uh, for the specific purpose of reducing heart failure. Uh, clearly, they decrease blood pressure. Uh, in the process, they do reduce the incidence of heart failure. However, in this regard, there's really no uh, evidence that they're superior to other antihypertensive agents, and perhaps there's uh, an increased risk of stroke in the elderly. A well-done study, new information, limited by the fact that none of these trials specifically uh, addressed hypertension as the primary endpoint, but nevertheless providing us with some useful information. For um, the Genuine Article, I'm Tony DeMaria. Thanks for being with us. a question or comment about a CBN story, send us an email at cbnfeedback at acc.org.